Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest and welcome again to the Color Farm in Woodenville, Washington. And I want to do a quick shout out to Amy and Max for the lovely tour and the passion around natural color that they are working on here in this dye farm. I am sitting here in front of a row of fresh leaf indigo and Max and Amy harvested from here for me to try out the fresh leaf indigo processes. Last week on Color Quest, I used this in a salt rub method, which I loved actually, and I would highly recommend it to anyone out there who wants to get their hands into the leaves and watch the color emerge. Now, this week, we're going to go from hand to machine, and we're going to be looking at a blender method. And that is yet another way that you can extract color from fresh leaf indigo. So join me as we see what a blended method will bring us in terms of natural color from fresh leaf indigo. Just to add a little fun, I'm going to include some additional substrates in this process this week, and that is wood and paper. Now, I've had videos here where I tested different dyes with these two different fibers, and they are wonderful options for natural color. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of that into today's mix and we'll see what this blended indigo is going to do with those additional fiber substrates. The other thing I wanna point out <laughs> is that you will notice my hands are blue and in the next few videos, they're gonna remain blue even beyond some of the indigo videos. So forgive the blue hands, but know that it's for a good reason and it's very much connected to my natural dye practice and color quest. All right, let's grab the indigo and get ourselves into the dye studio.
So what did you think of that process? I will tell you that between the two, I prefer the salt rub method. And let me share with you what I didn't like about using a blender. And I think probably the biggest part was that straining out the fine leaf particles that had been blended, even though I was using a cheese cloth in order to pull out the indigo dye, I found that it still wasn't enough to keep tiny particles of the fresh leaf indigo adhering to the textile, which just made it harder to clean off after the dyeing had been done. Now, I don't typically mind having a more modeled effect on my fiber because of the way I use it in my own art practice. However, it is something to be said if you're looking for a uniform dye that the leaf particles didn't strain out, I would recommend something more than cheesecloth. Probably a piece of muslin would work nicely. And it's just gonna take you a little bit of time to get that dye out of the mash, let's say. So that piece of it, I found to be a little bit more challenging. Now, in terms of using a blender, did it make it faster? Maybe, but I don't think so, honestly. And I miss using my hands in the salt rub method. So it's just out there for you to have a different option. And it probably depends on maybe the amount of fiber that you are going to be dyeing. And it could very well be that it's easier to process larger volumes using the blender method. But for me, I'm sticking to the salt rub. Some other things I noticed was that the color that I got when I added salt versus not having salt in the blender, I feel like the result of the salted blended fresh leaf was slightly greener. I don't know the chemical reason for that, if there is one. I don't know if it was just happened to be the luck of the draw, the leaves I was using at that time, the length in which I put the textile into the indigo, but I do believe my results anyway had a slightly greener tint to them than the blended without the salt. So why not try out both? That's what I did, and I'm glad that I did. And again, it should be noted that although I had pre-treated my textile with mordant, a mordant is not necessary for indigo. It has a great staying power on its own. However, it's always just a great practice and a convenience if you have textile that is pre-treated with a mordant. I'd like to say something else. There is a very scientific explanation of a chemical reaction that is happening when you use indigo. I am not going to try to explain it to you here. There are plenty of videos out there with that information available to you. I come to my dye practice purely out of wonder and curiosity and the joy that it brings me based upon the colors that are shared. I'm less interested in the scientific reasons and I really lead more with my gut. So I'm educating myself, but I'm just letting you know that I'm ill-equipped to talk in a meaningful way about the chemical process that's happening when using indigo. There are some indigo experts out there. And I strongly urge you to do some of your own research into this if you're interested. You certainly can learn so much more about indigo. Brett Bowles out of Oregon and the Dogwood Dyer are two women who are extremely knowledgeable. I'm always recommending that you tap into the resources and the pure amazing knowledge that is out there. And I'm grateful that I have other people who can share their incredible knowledge. I was lucky enough to learn about vat indigo while studying down in Oaxaca, Mexico, but this fresh leaf indigo is new for me and I'm, I'm hooked, not gonna lie. <laughs> 
And if you know of people that you've learned some beautiful things from in indigo or natural dyes in general, let me know. Put something down in the comments. I have met some of the most amazing people in this community, including Max and Amy of The Color Farm. And the more I open up to meeting and learning from others, the more I can share as well. So considering that fresh leaf indigo is something you have to use fresh, there is one more process that I'm going to look at with the indigo next time on Color Quest, and that is echo printing. I have a video here about a hammer technique when I was traveling in the Netherlands this summer and was able to do some hammer echo printing. I am going to do the same with the fresh leaf indigo. I've seen some pictures and I know it can make a gorgeous print. And because Max and Amy are so generous. They also provided me with many other flowers here from the color farm. And so I'm gonna throw those into the mix too. So grab your hammer and meet me next week on Color Quest for a little fresh leaf indigo echo printing. Have a great week. And if you live anywhere where fresh leaf indigo is being harvested right now, go get some. It's amazing.